WVVA in Focus, a weekly program about important issues and events in the two Virginias. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of In Focus. This morning, we are featuring three guests who will talk about a hospice agency in Towswell County. It's called Legacy Hospice and Palliative Care, and it's located in Rich Lance. So this morning, we will learn more about what services are offered, and we'll hear from those who work there. So joining me right now on set are three hospice workers. I'd like to welcome Tammy Vensel to the studio. Tammy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. We're excited. Oh, we're excited to have all three of you here. And uh, Tammy is the agency administrator for Legacy Hospice and Palliative Care. And also joining us are Kristen Thompson-Witt. She's the family nurse practitioner for hospice. And also Sarah Ellis joins us this morning. She is also the FNP and director of palliative care. So I want to thank all three of you for being here, taking the time out of your schedules to share more about what you do and what hospice and palliative care is. Thanks for having yes. us this morning. Absolutely. So Tammy, I'll start with you. For those who don't know, what is hospice? Hospice is a community-based program for patients who have chosen quality of life. For example, the patient has a life-limiting illness and they prefer to be at home with their families and receive the care there in their home environment. And what services specifically does Legacy Hospice and Palliative Care offer in Richland? So anyone can jump in here. We're just curious about what the services are. Yeah, so hospice and palliative care are actually two different lines of business. So the hospice is more toward people who are not seeing other physicians or not seeking any kind of aggressive treatment, and they're really focused toward that quality of life. So you have nursing, you have CNAs that can come and help with hygiene and cleaning, like things like that. You have a social worker that visits to make sure needs are being met. We also have spiritual guidance. We have chaplains on staff that help with that as well. Um, and then you have volunteers. the volunteers that can visit with the families because sometimes that's important. Not everybody has a close-knit family with lots of people to visit, so that interaction with other people is really important. Um, palliative care itself is actually doesn't offer as much support, but it is to help with symptom management, emotional support, goal setting for people with serious life-limiting illness that are receiving aggressive treatment. So it's actually just nurse practitioner visits in the home, and I can help with other resources and to try to direct them in the right way so that they have the support they need. And let's also talk more about those volunteers. So uh, Kristen, maybe you can jump in here, or Tammy. Uh, let's talk about the volunteers and what they do as well. We have volunteers who do multiple roles. We have volunteers who help in the office with things like that. Um, file administrative. In, administrative yeah. functions. And then we have volunteers who actually go to the patient's homes and they can read with them, play cards with them, just some social support so that they have someone to talk to. Um, they can pray with them, whatever they would like for them to do. Right, and those services are so crucial, right, ladies? Everything they that are, you just really mentioned like are so are. important. What's the feedback that you get from the patients and the family members? We have a lot of patients who say they wish they had called earlier, mm -hmm. that they Most, didn't realize yeah. What, yeah. what we could do. Um, hospice gets a bad rap sometimes. They think that, that, oh, that's just right when you're dying, and that's really not what we do. Um, hospice is better if it's started earlier. Yeah. Um, we can provide more support, we can do more management of symptoms, we can give people a better quality for the time that they have. And sometimes patients get better and we can discharge them back to home health. So. Well, that's a good point that you bring up, Kristen. What are some of the things that you ladies have heard um, that maybe aren't true about hospice, but that people, like you said, get, it gets a bad rap and they think it, but it's not necessarily true? I've had people actually ask, when are you going to bring that pill to take me on out? Really? Um, wow. We do Absolutely. not speed up death. No. We do not. We do everything we can to buy what quality time yes. we can. So I may not be able to send you to the hospital to have surgery, but now we can treat if you have pneumonia, if you have a urinary tract infection, if you have something like that. We're going to still take care of you. We're going to do everything we can for you. Another misconception is that patients, that we take all of their medicines away and don't allow them medicines, and that is the farthest thing from the truth because the nurse practitioners and our medical directors see that the patients, as Kristen mentioned, get the care that they need if they need an antibiotic or yeah. something like that. They see to it that they get that because we want the patient to have the best quality of life. Right, and I'm sure if someone did have questions or they just 
you know, didn't know exactly what you all do, we have a phone number, we have information available for our viewers that we'll share throughout this entire segment. So there's a toll-free number there, there's a local number, the website and the address as well. And um, Kristen, you, or, I'm sorry, Sarah, you touched on this a little bit, but what exactly is palliative care? Can you discuss that a little bit more? So palliative care is an extra layer of support for anyone that is still receiving treatment. Mm -hmm. um, an ex example of that would be someone who is dealing with cancer and is still receiving chemotherapy. Um, you're not eligible for hospice at that point, but I can come in and I can help manage symptoms um, such as nausea, vomiting, um, pain, and things like that. And just to help you kind of focus on where your goals are and guide you in the right way to make sure that you have what you need there. So, And um, Kristen or Tammy, you can both jump in here if you'd like, but how are hospice and palliative care different? Sarah discussed this a little bit, but how would you describe it to someone, like the differences between the two when you're first having that conversation with someone? I think the biggest difference is that hospice is, is a team approach mm -hmm. versus palliative care being a nurse practitioner driven program. So as Sarah mentioned earlier, um, with hospice, you have a skilled nurse, you have an aide, you had a social worker, a volunteer, and a chaplain. With palliative care, you have the nurse practitioner to assist you, so you don't have all of those layers. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So anyone can jump in here. So um, what areas do you cover specifically? We cover all of the Cannon, Russell, and Tazewell County, and then parts of Dickinson and Bland County. Great. And if someone is interested in learning more, what is the first step? Should they just go ahead and call? And when they call, what, who should they ask for? Absolutely. Just call our office and anyone at the office can help them. But one of the nice things that we do for our patients and families is we do what we call a meet and greet. And someone will go out to the patient's home or to the hospital, wherever the patient is at the time and explain services. They'll explain hospice services, mm -hmm. they'll explain palliative care services, ask a lot of questions to see what that patient and family needs and expects, and then we give that family a choice. Mm -hmm. So it's really great to be able to offer choices. The palliative care program is something that is relatively new um, to our area. So, well, that's a good point too, Tammy. When did the palliative care come about? We you saw our First, well, I saw the first patient for palliative care in April of 21. So we are nearing two years that, since we've started the program. And why do you think it's important to also have that added now for almost the past two years? There's a lot, there seemed to have been a gap, which is why we started the palliative program between patients receiving aggressive treatment before they were eligible for hospice. And there was a lot of suffering and they did not have the adequate support that they needed. And so like like I've described it before, like the palliative program is just that extra layer of support that kind of bridged that gap. Not everybody in the palliative program goes to hospice, but that's one of the reasons we have that there to make sure that we're getting the right level of care at the right time in the disease process. Makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well ladies, we do have to take a quick break. We have much more to talk about. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to this edition of In Focus Every Month, everyone. This morning we're discussing legacy hospice and palliative care located in Richlands, Virginia. So we've been discussing what hospice is, what palliative care is. There's some information for you as well. So we'll leave this up for just a moment for you to jot this down or maybe take a picture of your screen so you can go ahead and reach out if you did have more questions. So um, I do have a question for the ladies on set though. So who exactly pays for hospice and palliative care and are you a nonprofit? That's actually a good question, Melinda. We, um, services are paid for for hospice through Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance. And we are also, yes, we are a nonprofit. Yeah. And so we do fundraising. That's another thing that the volunteers help us with. Um, we do fundraising to ensure that no patient is without hospice services. So even a patient who's underinsured or has no insurance, we will provide hospice care to. Okay, well that's really good to know as well. So do folks need a referral from their doctor for hospice specifically? It is not necessary. Anyone can call us with a referral. And um, for example, if a family member calls us, we'll get the information from them about who their physician is 
And at that point, we would contact the physician, get the records and the information we need, do that meet and greet with the family, determine what you know that family needs and wants, and we would go from there. Okay. And can someone receive hospice in other places besides their home? Absolutely. We provide hospice services in assisted living facilities, in nursing facilities. Um, patients usually are in their home, but they can be at family members' homes or other places as well. Okay. Well, that's good to know as well. So what type of patients exactly are eligible for hospice care? Go ahead, Kristen. Hospice patients are usually those who have a terminal illness meaning their physicians have determined that they have a life-limiting illness that if it follows the expected course will probably be six months or less. However, sometimes people don't do that and we actually have studies that show if you have hospice early that your life expectancy is actually longer with an with illness that is in its final stages. If we do good management, um, some patients live much longer, and, and we're, we're not going to kick anybody out. We will keep you as long as we need to. If you, if you keep improving, we will send you back to home health, or we'll send you to Sarah and palliative care to manage as well. It, you have all of those options available. So another question, do insurance companies cover this? Does it depend on the company, or how do folks usually pay for the care? So hospice is paid for through the insurance, and yes, most insurances do cover that. Palliative care is a nurse practitioner visit in the home, so it's like seeing a nurse practitioner in the office, and it's billed by the visit. So most all insurances cover that as well. Well, that's good to know as well. And also, what type of patients exactly would need palliative care? And Sarah, you've touched on this, but let's elaborate on that. What type of patients that you're helping? So it's going to be those, and we, we mentioned the cancer patients, yeah. but you also have a lot of COPD, a lot of bad breathing issues that are going in and out of the ER. So that's one of the benefits of palliative care is not as many ER visits, not as many hospitalizations, because those symptoms are managed better at home. So things like... Um, COPD, which is the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, congestive heart failure, or things like Alzheimer's disease, um, especially as that progresses, a lot of those patients aren't able to even leave the home to see a provider. So those are things, again, before they're even eligible for hospice services that I can help see them make sure that they have what they need in the home. So it's anyone who is suffering from a serious illness. Yeah. And Tammy, what feedback have you gotten from like family members or those who have received the care? Let's talk more about that, about what you all have heard as you've talked and talked to those family members and friends. Absolutely. Um, as Kristen mentioned, one of the the most the thing that we get the most feedback is, I wish we had done this sooner. Right. I think people have a fear of hospice yeah. and what it entails. And it's kind of bittersweet when they say that because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, gosh, I wish we could have helped them sooner yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, these patients become part of our family. Yeah. Um, so being able to help in this difficult time, it, it's very rewarding. Right, and maybe the key is just to pick up the phone and call and, and just to see what Absolutely. happens and not be afraid of No pressure, the <laughs> no pressure. These are your options through Legacy Hospice and Palliative Care. That is your choice. So um, here, this might be a misconception that we've discussed a little bit, but does going on hospice care mean that someone is dying exactly? It means that they have a serious illness that could lead to that. Um, to qualify for hospice, usually your doctor, your family doctor, whoever's been taking care of you, has determined that if this disease follows the expected course, that, that it will be six months or less. But like we said, it doesn't always work out that way. Um, sometimes we've missed that mark a lot. We have many patients that we have discharged back to home health doing much better. Um, and that's always a good thing. We're, we're always happy about that. But to elaborate on that a little bit, a lot of people think that you have to be in the process of dying, right. like it's going to happen in the next couple of days. And like Krista mentioned earlier, there are studies that show you actually do better going to hospice sooner because you have that centralized care. So it doesn't have to be something that's happening in the next couple of days. You actually fare better if we're talking about months before right. that actually happens. And it's, it's a good opportunity to have some extra support for your family Absolutely. as well. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Right. Um, to help everybody deal with all of the changes and what's coming. Well, so. exactly. I'm glad you mentioned that about the support as well because um, that can really make a difference. You know, when someone's ill, it's stressful for them, for their family members. Mm -hmm. How does, like, having a team of people help? How do you think that makes a difference for everyone? It's very helpful when you have all of these different people involved because we all have our area specialty. We, our nurses typically are the ones who do a lot of the explaining of what's going on, what to expect, you know, even what your doctor told you that you might not have understood, or what your test results are that you might not have actually grasped in that initial setting where you got those results. They do a lot of hands-on care, they do a lot of um, pain management, wound management, things like that. The aides, when they go in to help, they typically are the people patients talk to the most because that is, you know, that time when you're, you're getting all of your personal care and stuff and, and they tend to have a great relationship with them and they, they really become family members with them. But they will tell them things that they won't necessarily tell anybody else. Interesting. Yes. So, <laughs> and I'm then sure. our social work staff and hospice um, are typically the ones who go out and they go, okay, how are you doing overall? What do you really need? What community resources might we be able to work out for you? What financial problems are you having? Do you need power of attorney papers? You know, what kind of planning have you done in advance? They do a lot of that um, social counseling and stuff as well, working with families when there are um, people who aren't dealing with things as well as others. Um, volunteer staff are extra support for families and patients just to have that social interaction. Um, our chaplain staff are wonderful. A Spiritual lot of people. Support. It's yeah. very needed at this yeah. time. Oh, I bet. A lot of people are, are dealing with issues from their past that they really haven't dealt with until then. And um, they can be a great support for them as well. So I guess it's important to remember that we're talking about time. That's why it's important to get into hospice early so that we can build that rapport with the family yeah. so that we're able to help support them more right and that can make all the difference and like you said there's a whole team and like Tammy you mentioned that spiritual side is so important and how, how important. do the chaplains help as well the chaplains will go to the patients homes and um, they will provide that spiritual support they may read the Bible with the family with the patient you know see what that patients unmet needs are do they have any you know goodbyes that they that are undone mm -hmm. any unresolved ends? issues yes mm -hmm. Abs absolutely yeah, well that's nice that, that that's offered as well. So is hospice care only for cancer patients? I think we've kind of touched on this, but um, let's just talk about that a little bit more. Absolutely not. Yeah. We, we cover many, many disease processes. Anything right. end of life? Some of the more common ones are the ones I talked about for palliative care, like the COPD, the congestive heart failure, um, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, Parkinson's. Yes. There are multiple diagnoses that can qualify you for hospice services. It's not just the cancer diagnosis. Right. Is that a misconception, though? Like, do people call and think, oh, I have to be on, you know, have cancer to get your care? There, there are a lot of people who have thought that, yes, and didn't realize that they qualified for extra help. There you go. Hopefully this segment will help inform and educate some viewers watching this morning. Well, ladies, we have to take one more quick break. We'll be right back after this. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to this edition of In Focus. This morning we're talking about hospice and palliative care, uh, legacy hospice and palliative care in Richlands. Uh, so, Ladies, let's talk again about what services exactly are provided through hospice so our viewers are clear what services that may benefit them or, or a friend or family member. You want to do that one again? So the services provided, like we talked about, are the skilled nursing visits mm -hmm. and the aid visits. If those are needed, those aren't always needed. We have the social worker, the volunteers, the chaplains that visit, and all of those visits are based on what the patient needs, so there's not a specific amount of visits that we dictate that for everyone it just depends on what you've got going on and that symptom management and another important thing to note as far as hospice goes is the 24-hour availability we always have a nurse on call and we always have a provider on call that if they need to get orders so if there is something that happens in the middle of the night these families are able to call and the nurse can come out and make a visit and then she has resources that she's able to reach out to to help make the best decision to what we can do to help relieve whatever 
whatever's going on with that patient. Melinda, if I could add, sure. there's also some cost savings involved for yeah. hospice patients because hospice is required and pays for all the equipment and supplies and some of the medications that the patient is receiving. So that financial strain on the family yeah. is kind of relieved with hospice. Oh, well, that's important. To yes. Know. And as Sarah had mentioned, all the different services that we have, it doesn't matter how many of those disciplines have been in your home today, your insurance is still paying for that. And we see that patient based on what they need. Let's talk also more about the meet and greet that you mentioned, Tammy. Is that kind of like a way to get to know the patient, the families, and like really what their needs are specifically to best fit them? For Absolutely. The when I go doing a meet and greet with the family, that's one of the first things I do is I assess what it is that they need, what they want, what they expect, so that I can help them determine which thing meets their needs. Yeah, that's very important. And again, there's never any pressure. If we come and do a meet and greet and you decide, I'm not ready for this just yet, or this isn't what I was thinking it was. Right, but that's a good way you to You have open our number if you mm -hmm. need us again. There you go, and that's a good way to open mm -hmm. the door to at least have that conversation to learn more. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. And so how often do hospice nurses and aides visit the patients then? The nurses um, are the first ones usually to go and they do the initial assessment and they start building the care plan from there. Nursing visits are typically one to three times a week depending on how people are doing. It can be more than that. Um, mm -hmm. If you're having problems, we can be daily. Those visits are usually 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer depending on what's going on and what we need to be doing. Aid visits are for your bath and your care. Um, those are usually two to three times a week, but again, can be more based on what we think that you need at the time. Um, all of these things are negotiated with the family and the patient because that they are part of our team as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So they're always involved in all of those decisions. Um, the social workers are required to go within the first five days and then they do their own assessment of what your needs are and they can base their visits on that. They're, they're usually once or twice a month, but they can be more often if there's things going on as well. Spiritual counseling is up to the patient and how many times they would like for that person to come. That can be anywhere from um, once a week, once a month, um, based on what your needs are. So volunteers, we are doing um, based on what the patient says that they need. So if someone so. is interested in being a volunteer, are, are you all taking those folks right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. I was hoping the answer is yes, because yes. there might be someone yes. who just wants to help. And, and volunteers, and great. they get to choose what, they, what their job is, what okay. their responsibility is, and when they work. And, you know, we do do background checks, drug screens. We treat volunteers just like we do employees, because I'm not going to send someone into your home that I don't know is safe and that's been screened. And they've right. had, yeah. Yes, exactly. they've been right. screened. They have the education they need to provide the support to you. And what are some of the duties that volunteers might be doing then? Um, the volunteers, um, just this last week, I had a, pa a volunteer who went to see a patient, just visited. Oh, he was nice. lonely. She provided socialization. Um, I spoke to her that evening after she went, and she was so excited about you know, the time she spent with him, Aww. and she's like, I'm ready to see another one. Do you have another one that Aww. maybe in a facility that I can go see? Um, well, that's nice, and just to spend time talking to someone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like that social mm -hmm. aspect, yeah. Yes. Um, so can each of you share, we have just a little bit of time left, a little bit over a minute, so briefly what each of your jobs consist of. So I'm the director of palliative care. Um, I have been the only FMP working for palliative care up until last week, and we just actually hired a new provider. But I make the visits in the home to assess the patient, to assess what's going on and what we need to do so that I can further help them. Um, we kind of talked about visits for hospice, but the palliative care visits are in general about once a month, but that is also based on need. It may be a little more than that or a little less than that. Okay, great. Well, thank you for sharing that, Sarah. And Kristen? I do the day-to-day -day management for the hospice patients. So when the nurses assess them and find that they have needs, then they usually will call and we'll say, okay, how are we going to fix this problem or how are we going to manage that symptom? Um, and that's generally my day-to-day -day function. I do some visits with patients when needed. And Tammy? I do the oversight for the agency. I am the proud administrator of a wonderful team. They are very knowledgeable. They're very caring, compassionate. As I mentioned, I think earlier, they treat these patients 
as if it were their family and how they would want their family treated. Um, very proud of all of them. Well, I appreciate each of you coming in and sharing more about what you do and, and what Legacy Hospice and Palliative Care does in Richlands and some maybe some myths that you've learned today that just aren't true about hospice and palliative care. So I appreciate each of you for coming in and sharing this important information with our viewers at home. Thank, Thank you, very you. Much. And I would just encourage anybody to call if they have further questions. We would be more than happy to answer those. All right, let's get that information up one more time before we go. So there's the contact information if you're interested. There's a toll-free number. There's the local number, the website, and the address in Richlands as well. So go ahead and pick up the phone, give them a call, and stop by and visit or visit the website for more information. That does it for us this morning. We've run out of time. I'd love to have you ladies back sometime. We've run out of time this morning. Thank you all again for joining us. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have a great day, everyone.